Good morning. Thank you for choosing to worship with us here at St. Matthew's United Methodist Church for our online 11 o'clock traditional service. We are so excited that you've chosen to be with us here today to worship with us online. We're very excited about some activities and some services that we have coming up next Sunday and then on Christmas Eve and the Sundays to come. So be sure to visit our website uh, and check in with the great things we're doing here at our church. Once again, we thank you for worshiping with us here for our 11 o'clock online traditional service. So now at this time, as we begin our worship, I invite you to join us as we sing our hymn of praise, which is hymn number 246, Joy to the World. Today we light, we relight the first two candles of the Advent wreath. The candle of hope and the candle of peace. Now we light the third candle of Advent. This is the candle of joy. Notice this is a rose colored candle. It is more joyous than the somber purple. As the coming of Jesus, our Savior, draws nearer, our joy builds with our anticipation of his birth. From the book of Isaiah, we read, Be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating, for I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. Isaiah 65, verse 18. From the New Testament, the words of Paul in Galatians, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Galatians 5, verses 22 through 25. Let us pray. We joyfully praise you, O Lord, for the fulfillment of your promise of a Savior and what that means in our lives. Thank you for the gift of salvation through the birth of your Son, Jesus. Create us anew as we wait, and help us to see your glory as you fill our lives with your living spirit. Amen. As we continue in our worship today, as we praise and give thanks to God, it's appropriate for us to join together and go to him in prayer. So at this time, I invite you to join me as we pray. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as we worship you today, Lord, we ask that your spirit to fill the spaces in which we occupy, Lord. Wherever we are watching this worship service, may this be the holy space we encounter you. Lord, we ask that you just open our eyes and open our hearts so that we can know your calling for us upon us at this time. Father, you understand us inside and out. Lord, you know all of our individual fears, our doubts and anxieties, 
that bother us today. So Lord, may you calm us so that we can be the best we can for our broken world. And Lord, with so much going around that has been impacted by the current pandemic, Lord, we just pray for healing upon this land. We pray for healing upon individuals who are suffering with health from COVID-19, Lord. We lift up those who have economically been impacted by this virus. We ask for our, our humanity to be made whole, Lord. We pray for our teachers. We pray for our parents and students and support staffs at the schools, Lord, the administrators, as they're having to manage this. And Father, we continue to ask for protection on our health care workers and first responders and other public servants who put themselves in harm's way for us. Lord, we ask for guidance and wisdom for our leaders who are trying to help manage this challenge for us, Lord. And at times this can all be overwhelming, but you tell us over and over again in Scripture to do not be afraid. Help us to trust in you. Lord, we continue to lift up all peoples connected to St. Matthew's United Methodist Church, Lord. We pray for those who are struggling with addiction at this time. We pray for other concerns within our local community. We pray for your one and only earth you've given to us to care for. And Lord, we pray for your church universal, its leaders, its members, and its mission. And we pray for those who have lost loved ones that are now joining the communion of the saints. So at this time, Lord, we ask now with confidence as the children of God, proclaiming together the prayer that our Savior taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I do have just a few announcements as we continue in worship. First, we are getting towards the end of our birthday gift for Christ mission that we do every holiday season. And so as we begin to get to a conclusion of that, I want to like to, to highlight that on Wednesday we're doing a, a, a men's club hamburger supper like we have, but it's going to be a drive through option. And we just ask that you just make your reservations on our website uh, before uh, Monday night. So you got till tomorrow night to make your reservations. And then you can drive through and get your hamburger supper. And this benefits our men's club. And what they do with those funds is they, they have a scholarship for a senior uh, student at St. Matthew's, a male senior student that they give every springtime. And also they make a donation to birthday gift for Christ. So we encourage you to do that. And then on Wednesday night, there's going to be a virtual wrap night. Well, we encourage groups to gather together on Zoom and wrap their Christmas gifts and, and get them ready for our delivery day. Our delivery day for Birthday Gift for Christ will be December the 19th. It's a Saturday morning. We just ask for you to uh, be watching our website and social media for more information. And if you have any questions about ways you can plug in with Birthday Gift for Christ or how some of the things may work differently this year, call our church office, 856-9581, and we'll be more than happy to help uh, answer any questions or help you get connected with that. Also, we encourage you to give uh, generously as you can this month through online. There is a link on our website to give. Uh, you also can make your giving uh, by mailing in a check or dropping it off at the church. So either way works great. And so we encourage you to do so, especially before the end of the year, if you want that to count for this year's giving. So, as always, continue to check our, our website and social media for all the wonderful things that are going on here at St. Matthew's. Uh, be on the lookout for Christmas Eve service information as well. We'll be posting that online and emailing that out. And so we're, we're real excited about what we can do for Christmas Eve. So now at this time, this is our offering time. This is the time if you want to give online, you can do so. If This is the time for you to let the Spirit move you in ways you can give of your gifts and talents to the church. So I invite you to uh, join us in listening for our offering um, called Advent Grace.
be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite all of the children that you have in your home, those young at heart even, to grab, gather around your screens for a wonderful message from our children's minister, Kate Gibbs. Good morning, everybody. I'm so glad that you're worshiping with us today. You know, this time of year, you probably notice a lot of Christmas symbols everywhere you go. I know that my family has enjoyed looking at Christmas decorations on people's houses, and we like to put in our own decorations recently and decorating the Christmas tree. When I'm driving around town, if I look at the light poles, I see angels on some of them. I've seen a bunch of stars on the top of trees. In some places, when I push the door open, I can hear a bell ring. These are all great reminders that it's almost Christmas. But there's one symbol that represents Christmas the best to me, and that is the nativity. And a nativity is just a model that represents what it would have looked like when Jesus was born. And a lot of people have a small one that they might set on a table or on their mantle at home. But here at St. Matthew's, we have a really cool and really big nativity. It's almost as big as I am. It's our moving nativity. And you can see right here, I have, I'm here with Mary and Joseph. And they are traveling to Bethlehem. And you might can see in the background that we have the shepherds and the sheep in the field. And I hope that you'll drive by the church in the coming weeks and watch as Mary and Joseph travel closer and closer to Bethlehem. And I bet if you pay attention, you'll notice that some others start showing up. You know, I think about how Mary and Joseph must have felt when they discovered that Mary was going to give birth to Jesus, the Messiah, our Savior. I bet they were shocked. I bet they were so surprised. But you know who wasn't surprised? God. He started this plan a long, long time ago to restore his relationship with us. And so God's done his part. So I challenge you this Christmas season to make sure that you're doing your part to have a relationship with God. And that means that you need to make sure that you love God and that you're loving on others. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we just thank you so much for all these symbols that we see that help us remember that we are celebrating the coming of your birth. And I just pray that you would help all of us not to lose focus on the true meaning of this season and to keep our sight on you. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, Kate, for that wonderful message. Today's New Testament reading will be coming from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, and hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At this time, I would like to invite you to join us in singing our hymn of preparation, which is hymn number 408, The Gift of Love.
Our gospel lesson this morning is going to come from John's gospel, from John chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. John 13, 31 through 35, where our Lord shares these words with us. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so I now say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. During this Advent season, we're using the beloved hymn, O Holy Night, as kind of our theme uh, for this season. Each week we're looking at a different verse from the hymn, and we're talking about it. And we're letting that kind of be the, uh, be the guiding force behind each, each week's sermon. Today's line is going to be, uh, truly has taught us to love one another. His law is love, and his gospel is peace. I'm a rule follower. I may not act like it. I may not look like it. Uh, I talk a big game, but at the end of the day, I'm a rule follower. I'm going to do what's expected of me. I'm going to, now, I'm going to find the line, and I'm going to go up to the line, and I'm going I'm to peek over the line. I'm going to see what's on the other side of the line. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of look what's on the other side of the line. I'm, I may even drop a few stones over there. I may get my, 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 tiptoe, my, my tippy toes past the line. But ultimately, I, I'm a rule follower. That's just kind of how I am. That's kind of how I was raised. I, I'm a believer in rules, believer in, uh, believer in, 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 in regulations, be, I mean, believer in systems. You know, I, I like structure. That's the word. I like structure. I'm a believer in structure. I, I like for things to be structured. Now, I, I tell staff all the time and tell others, um, if there's no rules, you can't make exceptions. So I'm not opposed to making exceptions to the rules sometimes. But by and large, my default policy is to follow the rules. I'm a rule follower and a rule keeper. I'm I'm a believer in following the law. Uh, I believe that, as Paul tells us in the gospel, in his letters, that we should be good citizens and we should seek to live in peace with each other. So I'm I'm a big, 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 big believer in following the rules. Make sure we're playing by the same rules. Make sure, making sure we're following the same structure. I'm a, I'm a huge believer and huge proponent of that. As I said, we're following along the lines of that beloved hymn this Advent season, O Holy Night. Truly has taught us to love one another. His law is love, and his gospel is peace. His law is love. And his gospel is peace. This summer, during um, our Wednesday night Bible studies uh, online, I hope you hope you hope you have enjoyed have been following along with our Bible studies online. Um, this semester, we we put them up on Facebook and social media and on uh, our website every every Wednesday night at six p.m. We're going to take a few weeks off uh, during this season, but um, we'll start back up early next semester. But during during the summer. We uh, went through one of my favorite books of the Bible, and that's the book of James. James is one of my favorite absolute books of the Bible because James kind of James, James cuts the point, doesn't he? James doesn't play around. James is like, okay, if you're a Christian, this is what you should do. If you're a Christian, you, you want religion that's undefiled? Well, take care of widows and orphans and keep yourself unstained from the world. <laughs> you you, you, you want to talk about faith? Okay, cool. I have faith too, but I'm going to show you my faith by my, by my works. James is talking to Christians. And James is talking to Christians who talked a lot about being a Christian, who talked a lot about living out the, the law of God, living out the love of God, and he looked for it in their lives. One of my favorite verses from James is, you believe that God is one, you do well. The devil believes. So for James, it, it isn't so much for James about saying that you're a Christian or saying that you keep the law, but your life should show it. And James has this wonderful verse within it, which talks about this verse called, the royal law. And this royal law is to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. This royal law truly has taught us 
to love one another. His law is love. His gospel is peace. Legalism is an interesting thing, isn't it? Um, legalism comes from an interesting place. You know, we're legalistic about so many things. It's interesting in our life what we become legalistic about. Um, it's, it's an interesting thing that we found out within my family how I was raised. Um, I was raised, and I, don't, I think sometimes the things in our life that we become legalistic, legalistic about or we hold to, we don't even really even know, always know where we get them from. Uh, I'll give you an example. I don't know any card games. I, I don't, I, the only card game I know is Uno. I, I don't know any games that involve playing cards. I just, I just don't. I don't know any of the rules or any of the games, even the simple ones. I, I know hearts exist. I don't know what hearts is. I, I have no idea. Because I don't know where I learned this. I, and I know I was never taught this from the pulpit, and I don't know where I picked this up, but somewhere along my early childhood, I either heard or I internalized or someone told me that Christians don't play cards, that, that we're not supposed to play cards. So somewhere along my life, I heard that, and I internalized it, and I thought, well, I'm a Christian, so I can't play cards. So I, I don't know any card games. I think we would all agree that being a Christian is more than playing cards or not playing cards. But somewhere, somewhere along the way, I'd heard and I'd internalized, but like I said, probably not even from my preacher, probably not from my parents, but I'd heard that and I'd internalized it, that Christians don't play cards. So I didn't know any card games because I was very, very legalistic. I was very legalistic in that. The law says it. Christians say it, so we shouldn't do it. Legalism starts from a good place. Legalism starts from a desire to follow and keep the commands of God. That's a good thing. Following and keeping the commands of God is a very good thing. We should want to do that. We should want to follow God's commands. We should want to follow God's laws. We should want to obey what God says to obey. Now think about the Pharisees. The Pharisees were actually, they meant well. Their desire was for the people of God to keep the old covenant, to keep the covenant, because in days of past, they did not keep the covenant, and they got in trouble for it. So the Pharisees says, okay, guys, this time we're keeping the covenant. No matter what happens, we're going to keep the covenant. Their desire was was to honor and please God. Their desire was to keep the law that God had taught them. That was a good thing. That was a good thing. So when we're legalistic, that actually comes from a, a good place, I believe. It comes from a place of wanting to um, glorify God, of wanting to keep God's law, of wanting to keep God's commandments. That's a good thing. We're all legalistic about something, aren't we? I am, you are, we all are. We're all legalistic about something. Like I said, for the longest part of my life, I was legalistic about playing cards. That was just what I thought we were supposed to do or not do. What if we were legalistic about keeping what James called the royal law? What if we were legalistic about love? What if we were legalistic about keeping Jesus Christ's command to love our neighbor? We can be legalistic about so many things in our life. But what if we were legalistic about keeping that command about God? What if that was the command that we worried about keeping? For Jesus, he tells us today, tells us in the passage that we read, that this is his command for us. Let me read it to you again. He says, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love 
for one another. Jesus tells us to love each other, but he tells us to love each other as he has loved us. He tells us to love each other as he has loved us. And so that's, that's the interesting thing. So let's, let's take a moment and look and see how Jesus loved us. So if we are, we're in John 13 in this passage today. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens in John 13 if we back up a few verses earlier. Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Now, it's interesting if you look at what's happening when he washed their feet. He, he, he goes to wash their feet, and Peter says, Oh, Lord, you shall not wash my feet. And, and Jesus says, Well, if you, I don't wash your feet, you have no part of me. Then Peter says, Oh, Lord, well, not just my feet, then all of me. What, what, what's happening here is that the, 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 Gentile, the, the disciples have already participated in what was called a mikvah bath. A mikvah bath is a Jewish type of ceremonial washing. If you ever have the chance to go to Israel, if we ever get out of quarantine, uh, and, and go to the Holy Land, you'll see all around these sh- sites, You'll see mikvah baths. These were, these were uh, baths of water that, that they would walk down into, and they would wash themselves in a ritualistic fashion. Some scholars think that's what John the Baptist was doing, was a form of this mikvah bath. Anyway, Peter and the other disciples and Jesus had washed themselves ceremonially to participate in the Passover feast. So they had already taken a bath. So that's when Peter says, Lord, not just my feet, but all of me. And Jesus says, you have no need of this. You've already taken a bath. So Jesus, when he washes their feet, what, his act of washing their feet wasn't, you know this, but it wasn't about literally washing their feet. It was about service. He says, you've seen me do this, and you're to do this for each other. Jesus tells them, to love each other. And by their love for each other, the world will know that his disciples. And he had actually modeled for these disciples what that love looked like just a few moments earlier. This love that Jesus was modeling, this love that Jesus was commanding that his disciples have and keep was not an emotional, ooey-gooey, warm, fuzzy type of love. Jesus is not talking about a love that is emotion in the same sense we think of it. But Jesus is talking about a love that is action. He's talking about a love that is loving action. It's action, not emotion. For him, his law is loving action. Not emotion, not emotion, but his law is loving action. And that is how we're supposed to love each other. So as we enter into this Christmas season, we're getting close, y'all. It's almost Christmas time. As we enter into this Christmas season, what would it look like? What would it look like if we were to love each other as Christ loved us? What what would it look like if we were to love our families in the same way that Christ loved us? Once again, not this love of not this love of emotion, but this love of loving action, the love of washing the feet of the disciples, the law, the, the, the love of laying down your life for your fo- your friends as Jesus was fixing to do. What would it look like if we were to love our families in the same way that Jesus loves us? What would it look like if we were to love our friends in the same way that Jesus loved us? I think one of the things that um, C.S. Lewis talks a lot about friendship in his wonderful book, The Four Loves. And I think one of the things that um, COVID has taken from us is this notion of friendship. Let's think about where your your friends. You typically, I I think we find our friends among our hobbies, if you will. Like you find your friends at work. You find your friends among the things that you do. Well, most of us we aren't really able to do that right now, are we? Aren't really able to go to I mean concerts or ball games or things like that. So we, we I think our friendships are impacted. It, it's difficult to be with our friends right now, isn't it? 
And I think a lot of us are lonely because of that. I know I miss, I miss not really seeing my friends. We have family, yes. But there's something sweet. There's something tender about the love of a friend. Do we act on that love? You may remember that when we first started COVID, one of the things I encouraged you to do was to check on three people a day. A phone call, a text, a letter, a note, something, an email. The rule of three. Check on three people a day. I think right now, as we draw close to Christmas, I, I think we need that now more than ever. I, I think we need that now more than ever. We need people to check on us. And we need to check on each other. We're, we're called to love in loving action. Not just emotion. Jesus tells us to love our enemies. What, what would it mean to love our enemies like that? That's, that's a harder one, y'all. To love our enemies in that same way? I think one of the reasons why Jesus commands us to love our enemies is because if we don't love our enemies, if we only hate or distrust our enemies, We've locked ourselves in a cage. We, we've locked ourselves in a prison. And the only path forward is to love. And sometimes the first action of love is forgiveness toward your enemies. Sometimes we can't love our enemies because we haven't forgiven our enemies. I, I read a quote one day, it's hard to love somebody you, you feel superior to. I think that's right. We're called to love our enemies. And that's hard. Because the first step to loving is forgiving. And that's hard. But it's our only path forward to freedom, y'all. Our path to freedom only comes from forgiving our enemies. Now, I'll never forget one time I asked my mama about my biological father. Remember, this is the the man who killed her daughter, my birth mother, my mama Sarah. I asked her one time, said, Mama, do you hate him? Now, remember, this is the man who killed her daughter in cold blood. I asked her, do you hate him? I said, no, Andy. If I hate him, he wins. That's the first step to loving our enemies is to let go of the thing that makes them our enemies. And that's hard work, y'all. And that takes a lifetime. But that's the only way we're free. What is it like for us to love the world? <laughs> you know, to love folks outside of our circle. To love the world. Because Christ died for the world. What does it look like to love the world? What does it look like to, 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 to do good for other people? What does it look like to let the lady in front of you at Walmart? Or what does it look like to let somebody out in front of traffic? What is, I know these are little things that don't, we don't think add up to much, but they do. What if each one of us lived out loving action each day of our life? What would the world look like is if we lived out loving action right now? In a world cold, in a world hard, in a world mean, in a world that's unforgiving, what would it look like if we lived out loving action towards everyone we met? That's the path to freedom, y'all. For us and for them to live out loving action universally. But notice he says something in this passage today. He says, he's talking to the disciples. He says, I give you this new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Now, it's interesting. Some often, you've, I've heard said this before. You know, we say, well, you know, he says that they will know we're his disciples, not by our theology or not by our worship styles, or not by all this, but by our love, which is right. They will know we are Christians by our love is what the old gospel song says. That's right. 
They will not know we're Christians by our theology or by our worship styles, but they'll know we're Christians by our love. So some of you are worshiping online right now. Some of you are worshiping and driving and at the same time. They'll know we're Christians by our love. But notice what Jesus says here, that we love one another. He's talking to the disciples. He's talking to the early church. He's talking to us. Why would the world want to be part of us as all we do is fuss and fight? As fellow believers, y'all, we've got to love each other. Regardless of theological differences. Regardless of stuff like that. We've got to love. I don't think we've got to agree. He's not saying here they'll know you're my disciples by how you agree with each other. He's not calling us to agree. But he's saying they will know you're my disciples by your love. We're called to love each other. And y'all, what does it say to a divided world if we as Christians can disagree with each other? Can have disagreements. Can, can have severe disagreements. Can really be upset with each other. What does it say if we can have these disagreements but yet still love each other? That's what our world needs. Because right now for our world, if we disagree with each other, we can't be in relationship with each other. Well, the gospel tells us, no, that's not the way this works. If We are Christ's body, his church. Even if we disagree, we can love each other. What an example that, was, that sets to our world, y'all. When we love each other in that way. Truly has told us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. What if we were legalist for love? What if we were legalistic for love as we were for everything else under creation? What would the world look like? This week we're going to at times battle with our legalism. Maybe we should give in to this one though. Maybe we should be legalist for keeping the royal law, the law of love. Today, friends, let's desire to keep all of God's commands. But let's strive above all else to keep this new commandment that Jesus has given to us today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this law of love. God, help us to live and out each moment of our life through all that we do. God, thank you for loving us. Father, help us to love each other in the same way. We love you. We ask it in Jesus' sweet and holy name. Amen. Today, as we close our service together, we invite you to pray with us. Perhaps you've never made the decision to trust Christ as your Lord and Savior. Today is a great day to put your whole faith in Jesus Christ as Lord, as Lord of all. No matter where you find yourself as you're watching this, we would invite you to make this decision now to pray, to accept Christ as Lord. If you'd like to learn more about how to become a Christian, reach out to us. We'd love to pray with you. Perhaps you'd like to learn more about joining our church. Last week in, Interse in, uh, in um, Drive-In Church, we took in a new member in Drive-In Church. Isn't that great? Perhaps as you're watching online, you'd like to unite your heart with St. Matthew's. Today's a great day to make that decision to, to join our church. Reach out to us. We'd love to tell you how. Perhaps there's some great need that you need, to be, need prayer for. Today, no matter where you find yourself, we'd love to pray with you. Reach out to us. We'd love to pray with you. But right now in this time, no matter where you find yourself, we invite you to pray with us as we sing our closing and invitational song together. Bye.
As we prepare ourselves to be sent out into the world this week, may the words that were said with our lips we believe in our hearts, and that what we believe in our hearts may we live out in our daily lives. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.